the year that I'm going to bring a word. Amen. I like these New Year's jokes. New Year's Day. Everybody meets everybody. I didn't see you since the first. I'm seeing you for the year. Well, God is so good. Amen. You made it over. Give him a hand clap. You made it over. Happy New Year. If any man be in Christ, he has become a new creation. The word says all things are passed away. Amen? All things have become new. I want you to pray for my voice this morning, you know? I shouted a lot last night when I made it into 2017. And so my voice is a little raspy, but God is able. Amen? He's going to give me some Holy Ghost honey and lemon to soothe it down and to declare the word so that God's people can be ready for what he has to say to us. And even as we got together as pastors and we were praying and believe in the Lord, hear what he's saying for 2017 for his people. And the word is to go forward. Very simple. Take the people forward. Amen? You remember when the children of Israel came out of Egypt? They were crying and oh, oh, wailing. They're standing at the Red Sea. Pressure. And God said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. So that is the word for today, even as God has laid it upon my heart. But we're going to pray. We're going to believe God this first Sunday, January the 1st, 2017. When I was a child, I never thought we'd live to see these numbers. But they're here. Amen. And if the Lord tarries, you know, they'll move on. So I want us to just, um, just stand to our feet briefly. If you can and you are able to physically stand, I ask that we stand as we honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we just thank you. Father, we thank you for 2017. We thank you, Lord God, that we are alive and well, and we made it through. Thank you, Lord, for another year, another day, to see, to see your faithfulness, your mercies. We just sang about your faithfulness and your goodness, and that you deserve all the honor, all the glory, and the praise. So we, we are grateful this morning for all that you have done. And for all that you're going to continue to do. And we thank you for word that shall never pass away. For word that is eternal. For word that will go forth and change and save and deliver. And bring faith and hope alive in the hearts of your people. And we thank you Lord God that we will hold on to that promise. That you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And that you will take us forward to full victory. We look forward to this year oh God with expectancy that something good is about to happen. We thank you. We bless you for Jesus. We glorify you, Lord God, and we declare that it is a forward march as we go on to victory in 2017. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Saints, you may be seated. You may be seated. You know, I don't want you to be apprehensive. It's a forward march. You know, it's, 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 if you want to conquer, you can't stay back. You must go forward. That's what God wants to tell his people this morning. He wants his people to know that armies march, crabs march. Anybody ever seen crabs marching? Oh, my Lord. People like to say they're marching like crabs. But there's an island off Australia called Christmas Island, and it has a red crab. And every so often, millions of these crabs, saints, I kid you not, they start to march to the sea. They normally live in the, in the, um, in the forest and in the, in burrow in the ground where it's cool. But every so often, pastor, they march to the sea. Five miles. Now, that is if, if a human being, they imagine a little crab marching for five miles to get to the sea. That's as if you were to march from here to, say, New York in human terms. Amen? And as they march, they have to encounter ants and the sun, and then they have to fall down this cliff. But as they march, amen, the male crabs march in front. The males lead out the march and the females behind. So men, when we're marching and we're going forward, you need to take your rightful place in 2017. Amen? Whether it's in the house of God, or it's in your home, or it's in your office, or wherever you work, you need to take the leadership and be the king and the priest in your home that God has ordained you to meet. It's a forward march thing. The females march behind and they get to the sea, and then they mate, and then they, 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 the whole cycle starts all over again. So sometimes God uses his creation to teach us some lessons. Those animals are focused 
They have to cross highways. They have to cross all sorts of obstacles. But they are determined to get to where they're supposed to get so that they can continue the next generation. Amen? Samuel told the children of Israel when they had defeated the Philistines, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. And he raised up a big stone and he called it what? Ebenezer. That's what Ebenezer means. Hitherto hath God helped us. God has brought us through many struggles, many trials, many tribulations, but he has brought us over. Amen? In the word of God in Joshua 21, 45, he says, not a word failed of any good thing, Joshua 21, 45, which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. That's what God's word says. When he speaks a word over you, it must come to pass. It may be delayed. Come on now. It may get opposition and believe you, me. When God gives you a word, the enemy comes at you from all quarters to stifle the word, to kill it, to take it away. But by the grace of God, it shall come to pass. God's word must go out and it must accomplish his will. Amen? So it's a forward march thing. I want you to look back at 2016. We just came over. You remember the struggles? Oh, come on. You, you look too. You, you, this church is getting too quiet. We used to be known as a church that make noise. You remember the old sanctuary? There was a man who used to write in the paper. I don't know if he's still alive. They used to write in the paper and say, there's a church in Casada Garden that make too much noise. When people make noise at Lions Den, they bear it. When they make noise at Cricket, they bear it. When they make noise in the political rallies, they bear it. So we will make noise in the house of God. Come on. Our victories in our noise. When the children of Israel marched around Jericho, they made noise. And when they made noise, the walls fell down. Sometimes your victory is in the noise that you make. So even as we're marching forward, we go make noise. So if you can't take it, get some earmuffs and cover up your earbell. There's noise in the house of God, a joyful shout. Come on, we're going forward. You remember the whippings we got? Verbal whippings, sometimes stoning. People would throw things at you, words, all sorts of accusations, but you made it over. Betrayal, come on. But you made it over because God is with you. And the word of God says, when he is with you, who can be against you? We're going forward. No doubt, even in the last year, sometimes we may have failed God many times, but he never failed us yet. I may fail you, my, or the pastors may fail you, the deacons, the deaconess, the parking attendants, the ushers may fail you, but hallelujah, Jesus never fails. We sing it all the time. I want you to get a revelation of that. He cannot fail. Plain and simple. People worship all sorts of gods. Big God, little God, Buddha, Muhammad, you name it. They're in the grave. But my God is alive, so he cannot fail. We are going forward in Jesus' name. Amen? I want you to know seven little points before I come off of this platform and God has his way with us. That I want you to hold on to as we go forward with this forward march thing in 2017. The first point is this. Wipe your eyes. Don't live in the past. This is a new season. Point number one, wipe your eyes. Saints of God, you know there's a time for everything under the sun. It's right there written in the God's word. Ecclesiastic 3, verses 2, going right down to about verses 10. It talks about a time to be born, a time to die, pastor, amen? A time to weep, amen? A time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. And you might have gone through 2016 and you had serious grief. We had serious grief in this, in this house of God. We lost our dear pastor. We went home to be with the Lord. And we cried and we mourned and we missed him. But he's with the great cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. So we can wipe our eyes. We can encourage ourselves that he's there encouraging us. Come on. Go on. You know, Pastor Joe, he said, he said, look it. We spoke about our pastor just the other day. Pastor Joe, pastor Joe used to tell us, when I get old and I can't stand, Put me on a stone heap, and I will fire stone on the devil. That was the kind of man he was, passionate after God's work, 
and wanting to see this work continue. So we're going to go on. We mourn, we weep, but we, we wipe our eyes. So I'm telling you today, even just, just in, 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 in the natural, whatever came last year and caused you to cry, wipe your eyes, wipe it away. It's in the past. Wipe it. We're moving forward. We're not going to cry over it no more. And you know what the word, just listen to what the word says. There is a time to cry and a time to laugh. You know, does the crying come first? But then what after the crying? Time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. The good always come after. So we have been mourning, we're going to dance. We'll be crying, we're going to laugh, and we have the last laugh. And God sits in the Bible, the word says so. God sits in his heavens and he laughs to derision the enemy. So he wants you to laugh. He wants you to go forward in power and in victory to wipe your eyes. You remember when, when he went to, to, to Lazarus' tomb? Jesus could have said, oh, everything is okay. You know, it's fine. No, but he wept. He empathized with us. He has, he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He know what it is to feel the loss of a friend. So he weeps. So there's nothing wrong in weeping. Weep when you have to weep. But when there is a time to wipe your weeping eyes and laugh and move on, laugh and move on, saying, whatever is in the past that has died, it's buried, it's finished, we are going forward. Amen? God wants his people to go forward. I love the Lord because even as you grieve, he has sent you the grief counselor. Come on. Even before it's modern times, you now if there's tragedy in the schools or somebody has died, they're sending counselors. Am I right, Pastor? To counsel the young people and the children and to, to talk to them about what the tragedy and death and, and, you know, how they can get over this. But I bless God that when Jesus Christ went back to heaven, he said, I'm going to send you another who is going to be a what? Comforter. He'll be with you all the time. He's never going to leave you. So he's the one that you go to your problems. You may tell it to the past, you may tell, but tell it to Jesus. He's not going to chat out your business. He's going to comfort you. It's right there in the word. He'll counsel you. So when the scriptures come and the word come, and, and God is trying to speak to your heart, accept it and receive it and take the counsel in and move on. Amen. Saints of God, we hurt. Yes, but there is hope in God. God is near to the brokenhearted. Every season of our lives that we go through, he's with us. Psalm 31, 15. Short verse. Psalm 31, 15. My times are in your hand. What does that mean? God has every season of his life in your hands. Nothing takes him by surprise. He knew when you were going to be born. He knew when you're going to get married or you won't get married. He knew when you're going to have your children. He knew how they're going to turn out. He knew when you're going to close your eyes and leave this valley. But your times are in his hand. Just leave them there. Don't worry about things that you can't have no control over. I've always told that to God's people. Don't go to the gas station every week and quarrel because gas has gone up. You can't stop it. You can't pull it down. Bless God that he's given you a job to pay for the gas. But your times are in his hand. He'll take care of you. Amen? Reach for the counselor's help. As we enter every new season, as we go into 2017, we go with the Holy Spirit. We don't leave him behind. He's a very present help, the Lord is, in a time of trouble. You may be broken today. You may be holding on to some grief. You may be, there may be things that have hurt you in the past, but God wants you to just leave it in 2016 as we go forward. He will heal your broken heart. He specializes in broken hearts. You know, people say time heals wounds. Not really, you know. Time is like aspirin. It does dull the pain. It does the pain. It does the pain. It, but it never really healed the wound. The only solution to a broken heart is the heart specialist, the man Christ Jesus. He is the only one that can, you know, when Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, they say all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together. But I tell you what, they didn't know about Jesus. That they call the fixer the putter back together, the restorer, the healer, he would have put Humpty Dumpty back together. And no matter how much you've been broken, no matter what they've done to you, no matter what they have said,
no matter what peace may say, God is a restorer. Oh, I bless him. The old you is dead. You are new creation. All things the word says become new. He's put you back together again. He can mend you. He can fix you. Make you brand new. Put a new label on you. Child of God. I bless God for what he's doing amongst his people. So I want to tell you today, sir, saints, this new year is a rejoicing day. You see me so happy. I am happy that I made it. I should have been dead. But I'm here because of the goodness of God. God keeps his promises. Turn with me, saints of God, to Isaiah 54, verses 2 and 3. We're going forward. We're going to embrace new things. Isaiah 54, verses 2 and verses 3. It says, enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Deacon Charles. Do not spear. Lengthen your cords. And strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, saith the Lord. This church will expand to the right and to the left, saith the Lord, as we go forward. You see the little addition that we're extending on the foundation? It is the word of God that told us to extend it because God is going to enlarge us to the left and to the right in Jesus' name. Nothing happened by chance. Nothing happened by accident. Hallelujah to our God. We are going to go forward on dry land. Amen? Do you receive it this morning? Dry land. Point number three, as we go forward, March. What is dry land for you will be a trap for the Egyptians. Pharisee had land. God hardened his heart and he started to go forward. But if you read the word of God, it says he caused the dry land that was for the Egyptians to become mud for the enemies. And their wagon and the chariot wheels started to stick and start to come off, and the horses started to... If you ever see, um, there's a movie about it with, with Moses going through the Red Sea, and if you ever see the whole confusion in the enemy's camp. So God give you a red carpet. Just imagine. A nice red carpet like Sister Felton's dress. A lovely red carpet. And you're marching through to victory, treading through. And then as soon as you pass through, the carpet roll up, and the mud start for the enemies behind. They're not getting no red carpet to follow you because you're a child of God. They're going to get stuck in the mud. They're going to follow because they're wicked. Pharaoh is very wicked. But God said, I'm going to harden his heart. I'm going to teach him one final lesson. You know, Egypt never catch itself up to now. Up to this day. Because when the children of Israel left, they pick up all the bodies. They set up gold, silver, everything you have. Give me, give me, give me. And they pack up and they move out. Egypt has not caught herself to this day. But God is saying that the Egyptians that are following you, they will be drowned in the Red Sea. He doesn't make jokes concerning his children. The God that was fighting for Israel then was the, the God of Sedia, the God of host pastor, the captain of the army, the warrior God. That that is an attribute that he has, that he displays it when the time is right and when his children call upon him to fight on their behalf. He will fight for you. Amen? But you ever wondered, even as the children of Israel went through, and the enemies got stuck. I wanted to give you an illustration. You ever wondered how a spider makes a web that catches other things and even predators get stuck in the web, but the spider can run across the web and never get stuck? The spider, let me tell you a little secret, has some suction cups in its feet that secretes an O-I-L, an oil, that causes it to glide over the thing. So what the spider has in his anointing on his feet that causes him to glide over will cause the enemy to be stuck in the name of Jesus. Saints of God, it is the anointing that is going to take us over to the promised land. The secret is in the oil. Fresh year, fresh, oh, come on, you sound like you don't believe it. Fresh year, that's the word of God. The word of God said in Psalm 92.10, but 
My horn you have exalted like a wild ox. That's the psalmist speaking. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So, 2016 oil is not good enough for 2017. God is going to anoint us with fresh oil. Fresh oil. We're going over. The old oil is not going to work. It's a fresh oil because it's a forward march. It is the fresh oil saints of God that caused you to come over into 2017. It is the oil that you had last year that anointed you, that kept you from going crazy. It's the oil that you had last year that kept you from dying in an accident, from cancer, from disease, from getting Zika. It's the oil. It's not no insect repellent. It's not no off. It's the oil that protected you. It's the oil that caused you to pay your light bill every month and pay the mortgage and pay the rent. It is the oil that restored your children and brought them back. And it's the oil that is covering them so the enemy can't kill them even though they're not saved yet. It's the oil. You've got to know the weapons you have. It's symbolic of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. It's the oil. It will cause you to flourish. It will protect you. It will take you to the Red Sea. And there's some truths in the Word of God about the oil that's symbolic of the Holy Spirit. In Exodus 30, 30, without oil, it says, Thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons that they may minister to me. That's what God is saying. So when you see you come up and we anoint you with the oil, it's so that you can minister to God. It's scriptural. Don't let nobody tell you no foolishness. All them people who put arcanists up on you. It is the oil! And when I sit down in the plane and, and you go into the turbulence and sometimes people bring out their rosary, so I said, the blood of Jesus. Hey, shut up. I am not afraid to talk in tongues, even if I'm in first class. Hey, shut up. This plane is going to Miami in the name of Jesus. Walk with your oil. When you go to work and they're giving you trouble, go early and anoint up the place and tie them up in the name of Jesus. Take your oil and go on your property and drain it out, dribble it out, shake it out, shake it out. We don't know what's in these lands. How can a wickedness happen in this place? Especially if you live on them sugar estates. They just beat people to death. Do people have kind of wickedness? How can a contrary spirit there? You get a nice piece of land and you think, oh, I love this little land here. You don't know. Somebody was hung right there. Get your oil and consecrate the ground. Use the oil. Use the power that God has given you. Amen. Tear down all the principalities and the powers and all the curses and everything. And you will see, I tell you, even the grass grow too fast in your yard. But every tree that you plant will flourish. Come on. I bless God. I always remember testimony Sister Bowery gave about, about um, I think it's a, a cat that she anoints with oil. And the cat restored. I did it with a dog I had and the dog was restored. The oil. Don't be ashamed of your faith, saints of God. Don't be ashamed. You've been taught. You go to the hospital room and people are there and everybody, oh, get your oil and anoint them and pray and believe God. To, that's what the word says now. If there's any sick amongst you, what? Call for the elders of the church. Anoint them with oil and what? The prayer of faith will raise up the sick. You're standing on word. We're going forward. We're going forward to victory. Our children need to experience it. We need to tell them about the oil and the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? We can't substitute that for anything else. We have to know who we are, whose we are, and we use the weapons at our disposal in the name of Jesus. Amen. Point number four. Don't look back. It's a forward thing. It's a new thing. You, you remember there was a woman, Sister Robinson, she was in... in um, um, Sodom, and the angel took her out, took out um, her husband, her two daughters, and he gave her a command. He said, flee to the mountains, and whatever you do, do not look back. But I don't know if she had a big house in, in Sodom, I don't know. And she had plenty of furniture, and, you know, her new pot set where she just buy but on her mind. I don't know, but the word says she looked back. And when she looked back and saw the destruction, she was turned into a pillar of salt. She looked back and she saw all. 
You get it? <laughs> when God taking you out of Egypt or out of Sodom or wherever you are, keep your face looking forward. Don't look back for the old thing behind here. You know what I'm saying? We're going forward. It's a new thing. Old boyfriend leave you. Old girlfriend leave you. They fire you from the old job. Old thing. God is doing a new thing. You're going to get a better job. Come on. Pay you more money. You get promoted. The new thing. You move into a new area. New ho- it's a new thing God is doing in your life. Embrace it. We're very nostalgic as, as, as um, a people. Just tend, we tend to, oh, I remember the good old days. Yeah, the good old days. I don't know. They don't know. If you look at some of the things, they not so good in many ways. The good old days are hard days. Nowadays, children, you go to school and the teachers love you and hug you up and kiss you. You know what they? You go to school late, you get lick the whole class. They line up everybody and lick everybody. They ask you a question. Two plus two. And before you go, what? You get lick. That's the old days. But in new days, there's a little journey you don't know. Two plus two. And they sing your little song and you go home and you get your little star and everything. We never get them things here. Pastor, you know it is. You know, every, every morning you have to go to the shop and buy two ounces of cheese and, and butter and a little bread and everything. It's tough. But we made it. I don't want those days to come back again. You live in country and you have to, I, I, listen, I, I remember when I started to work first, I lived in CB Farm and when, the, when I used to drop a bottle to the gas station at, at 10 o'clock at night, I had to walk, no bus. And if somebody lucky, I beg a ride. But the days, no bus running everywhere, every village, all hours of the day and night. Good days now. We like a lot of the old things we hold on to. But here's what God's word says. Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 21. Let's read there. We had a little song we used to sing about this. Remember ye not the former things, neither ponder the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? For I will make a way in the, and rivers in the, the beast of the field shall honor me, the dragon and the owl. That's what the Lord says. When he makes the way for you, through the wilderness, the beast of the field will honor God. You know who the dragon is? The devil. One day he must bow his sister to and honor God. That's what the word is saying. But God is doing a new thing. He's taking us forward. And he says, I will give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen one. Chosen, adopted. Come on now. But if you accept, you know what's the beauty about being adopted? You were chosen. When you go to a hospital and you want to adopt a baby or wherever, you look, mm, not the one. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, this little um, picky head one. This is the one I want. That's how you are. And God chose you. When you're adopted, you're chosen. And he said, this is the people I have formed for myself. And they shall what? Show forth my praise. When God form you and call you to himself, Sister Asprey, you have to show forth his praise. You have to. That's what the word of God says. You shall show forth his praise. And you're going to go through the wilderness, but we're going to praise him and we're going to go through the wilderness. And you know, the time in the wilderness depends upon you. The word of God says they could have taken a shortcut to the land of the Philistines and gotten to Cana. But God said, no, they're going to afraid to fight. Let me take them the long route. It's amazing as you're taking people forward sometimes. And that's ask anybody who's in leadership. Whether you're in a company, whether you're in government, whether it's in a classroom you're leading, a church, people are difficult to lead. Hey, hello? You complain about one government and you vote them out and if you get the next one, you complain about one government. <laughs> but that's how people are. People, when you're leading people, they complain a lot. They never want to listen to that. The children of Israel, and you talk about, oh, if it was us, we, after we saw those plagues, we would have been just so faithful and followed God, Moses. No. It would be just people of people. It haven't changed. 
You know what they're telling Moses? Every time, oh, you bring us out here to die. You're so wicked. All the leek and the garlic we used to have. They forget the leeks what they used to get in their tail every day. But they talk about leek and garlic. You remember how the devil just knocked you about? You ever have no money? Come on. You know, every tin pank along bring big in there. You all like this morning, you, instead of you in the house of God, you look like something the cat does pull in. Big bag on the eye. You're tired. Knock about. Just the devil had you like that. But now you're looking so nice. In your done done. Oh, bless God. You served in the house of God. I bless God for his people. Imagine that. Talking about seasoning. Leek and garlic. And quarreling with Moses and fussing. But I want you to forget about those old things. Amen? Forget about the bitterness. And this is, this is an important point. As we go forward in 2017, you see, saints of God, betrayal is what people do to you, but bitterness is what you do to yourself. You can't stop nobody from leaving you. Come on now. If they want to leave, they're going to leave. You can give them all kind of thing in their food. You can tie some over their head when they lie on in the bed. But when they want to leave, they will leave. But bitterness is, is something that you choose to do to yourself. To hold on to the thing. And you're punishing everybody else for something that happened to them. Let it go. One of your children disappoints you and you're punishing all the others. Let it go. You need to let it go. Leave that thing behind. A lot of the word of God says, when we, 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 we hold on to, to, to bitterness, it deep, 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 deep roots. Let me tell you, there's a thing that's taking over Antigua right now. There's wild tamarind. When I was a little boy, wild tamarind bush used to be like that high. No, they're not almost as high as this church. And uh, you see them coming up in your yard and you try to pull it up. Deacon, Deacon Leroy, the thing is that big and you can't get it out the ground. Deep roots. That is what bitterness does. It pushes down deep. So it's hard to come up. So you're holding on to the thing and you're bitter and you have your face set and you're angry. You don't know what to do me. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Let the thing go. Oh, my God. You know what the word says? The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you're bitter, you can't have joy. And when you can't have joy, you're weak. And when you're weak, the enemy don't even have to, to, to lean too hard and go, and you fall out. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's what Nehemiah said. So as we, we, when we are being joyful and we're encouraging you to lift your hands and bless God, we are doing something to spiritually strengthen you so that you can go forward and you can fight in this world and you can stand up. Amen? The Word of God says in Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. This is what Paul wrote. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from among you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So God wants us to eliminate all the bitterness saints from our conversation as we go forward. Don't rehearse the past over and over in your mind. Unless you're trying to encourage somebody with a testimony to show them how you got over something and that encourage them that God is going to take them over too. Don't remember the former things. Consider them not. The things of old. God is going to do a new thing with you individually, a new thing with this church. We really need to be praying for that outpouring of God's spirit to do that new thing. Saints of God, the harvest is great. It's a great harvest out there. The laborers are few. And I'm praying that even as we go forward in this year, God is going to send more laborers in the harvest, more people to sing on the worship team, more people to usher, more people to want to minister, more people who won't keep their Christianity to themselves. Invite your co-workers. Invite your, your unsaved brethren. Just tell them, look, faith come by hearing, and I want you to hear a word so that faith will come alive. You know why a lot of people don't get saved? They never hear nothing. I bless God for the word that will go out. That's how faith, as you hear this word, the faith starts to come alive in you. That's what it, God, so God wants people to hear a word. And this year I pray that we will all be laborers together with God as we go forward, march to full victory. Amen? So, saints of God, let's press forward. 
the word of God says, towards the mark, which is the prize of that high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen? A new thing. Bye-bye to 2016. Bye-bye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye-bye. That's what we're telling you. Everything that's in the past, that's pain, that's sorrowful, that's bye-bye. We're moving forward. In Jesus' name. Point number five. Don't walk in circles. It's a forward thing. Do you ever wonder why the children of Israel took so long to get to the promise? Forty long years. Forty years is a long time. And you know what psychologists say? They say if people are lost in the woods or lost in the desert, the natural tendency for the human being is to walk in circles. So you're walking, but gradually you drift in. You drift in. And before you know it, you drift and drift and drift and drift until you come right back where you are. Circle. But when you go forward, March, it's a straight line. We are going forward. Amen? The children of Israel walked around in circles because they had a bad attitude. They were naturally disobedient. Everything that Moses told them, they, they just complained about. They were in Egypt and they saw the covering of the blood of the lamb. And they forgot about that, that, that God just miraculously saved, kept them alive and destroyed all the firstborn of the Egyptians. And they did grieve God's spirit. They mourn about manna. They mourn about water. They mourn about meat. They mourn about Moses hearing from God, everybody hearing from God. Who you think you be? Moses went up to get the tablets before God, and before the man could even come back, they dancing naked around a, a car. The lack of the belief in the word of God and the promises brought forth the wrath of God many, many times. You remember when the spies came back from, from the promised land? Oh, ten of them complained, boy, the people in them like giants and we like grasshoppers and, and you know, Joshua and Caleb. They said, but take it easy. We are more than able to, to subdue this land. Look at what God has done for us so far. And they actually made so much noise and complained. They bring us out here to die. You don't have no grave enough in Egypt. The word of God, if you read it for yourself right there, saints of God, they took up stone. It's in Numbers 40. To almost to stone Moses. And God said, look here, look, 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 look. Numbers 14, 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be that ere they believe me for all the signs which they have showed among them? God is saying, what else do they want me to do? You hit a rock, water, go forward. They say they want bread. They get manna every day. And hear how good God is. He gives them just enough that they need. He was teaching them a lesson. My grace is sufficient for you. Amen. What he sends for you today, you may think it's just for today, but he wants you to trust him that he's going to send for you tomorrow, just as he sent for you today, and he's going to send for you next week and next month, because he's faithful, that was promised. Amen? They said they want meat, bread, bread, bread every day. Sound familiar? Tired of this bread business. Want meat. God said, I'm going to give them meat. God sent quail, a cloud of bread. God said, you're going to eat the meat till it comes to your nose. You have vomited. That God wasn't against them having meat, but the way how they behave. And he said, you know, they provoked me so much. God said, look, you know what I'm going to do, Moses? I'm going to kill every last one of them. Tut, mon, and bagai. God said, I'm going to wipe them out. And Moses cried before God. And Moses said, please, God, don't do it. You know why? Because if you kill them, you know what the enemies are going to say? They're going to say, you bring them out of Egypt, but you couldn't, you wasn't able to take them to the problem. Moses did some psychology of the Lord. He said, they're going to say you're not able to take them to the promised land. So that's why you kill them. You can't do it, so you just kill them. And Moses got us. So Moses said, you're safe. But you know what? None of them here that come through. They're going to walk until their shoes are not going to wear out, but they're going to wear out. Forty years. God said, everybody who came out of Egypt except two, Caleb and Joshua, all of them dead. It's their children and grandchildren that went over. Those that were born in the wilderness. Because they, they provoked God. So God said, you know, yeah, not, not, not worthy to go over there. Yeah, I can't go in there with a bad attitude. But I bless God, even as we, 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 we go forward now, we have an understanding of what we need to leave behind, what we need to drop. We need to drop those baggage and we need to go forward. 
so that we're not cursed walking around in circles, round and round, one step forward, two step back. One, no, we are going forward. It's a forward march thing, Pastor. Amen? In the name of Jesus. I want to tell you this. Caribbean people love plenty baggage. Oh, I'm a Jamaican brethren in the house. The, when I went to Jamaica, to Kingston Airport, I have never in my life seen bags big I like that. Hallelujah. Those folks, when they come from foreign, they bring some huge bags. And it's not just my Jamaican, all Caribbean people, when you come, they tell you one bag, you have to pay for it. They say, I don't mind, I'll pay for the three. <laughs> Sister Luana, you know, the, if, if they were to follow to us, the plane wouldn't be able to lift off the ground with the amount of load we just have. Plenty baggage. We all love it. We like to walk with a lot of things. Amen? When we're traveling. The sneakers, the brown shoe, the black shoe, the sandals. I just a week you're going with far. <laughs> Plus, when you go, you're going to buy things to bring back. Amen? Leave some of the baggage behind. Amen. We're going forward. Too many things weigh you down. <laughs> Hebrews 12, verse 1 says, Seeing therefore now that we are encompassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we lay aside all the things that are holding us back and keeping us down, and we run in forward. We light. Amen. When athletes are training to run, they just put some ankle weights around them during the training period. So they, they're accustomed to run with a heavy weight. But when they come to the day of the race, they take off the heavy thing so that they can run the race that is set before them. God wants you to run this year. God wants you to be quick on your feet this year. God wants you not to come forward with the no old baggage from 20, 2016. It's a new year, a new thing, fresh oil, fresh anointing. He's the, come on, give him a praise. Give him a hand clap. Hallelujah to Jesus. We go forward to the promised land that he has in store for us, but that length of that march will totally depend on you. Amen? Point number six. Where he leads, we will follow. Where he leads, we will follow. The children of Israel, saints of God, they had a cloud by day and a pillar by night so they could see. In today's world, you have what's called a GP, what's it, GPS? It's called Global Positioning System. When you put on your cell phone and you see a little Google thing come and say, do you want to let Google find out your location? If you put yes, that thing sends a signal to some satellite somewhere and it pinpoints exactly on Earth where you are. It's been a good thing because people have been kidnapped and because they have been having their phone on, they've been able to track them to see where they are so that they can rescue them. Amen. A global positioning system that tells you where you want to go, gives you direction. You're driving in Miami, whatever you want to put in the address, and tell you turn right here, turn left there, and you can go exactly where you want to go. But I want to tell you that God has his GPS. It's God's presence shown. He's here. He tells us where to go. We just have to be listening. We just have to be attentive. Amen? I like how the cloud, when the cloud moves, they move. When the clouds shift this way, they shift. When the clouds stand still for a day, two days, three days, they stand stood still for two, three days. It's instructive saying. They came out of the Egypt. They went into the wilderness. But God wants his people to totally depend on him. You see, where he guides, he provides. He guided, he took them, he took them through the wilderness, but he provided for them. Psalm 78, 52 to 3, he made his own people go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness. Like a flock, he led them on safely. So that